This is a time-lapse capture of the traffic levels on the major links of USU's network. You are seeing the activity for March 2011. This visualization gives you the impression that our network is a living thing, and it is in its own way. As we combine sources of information, we gain a better understanding of our network. Eventually we see that at its heart, the network is thousands of people, each with their own activities and goals. We learn these people. We learn their goals. Sounds creepy. Well, it is creepy. Sharing what we learn is probably illegal. Monitoring people is a well-regulated activity. The more thoroughly you do it, the more likely you are to run afoul of the law. You can't do IT security without learning about people. You also can't do IT security without a basic understanding of the surrounding legal environment. USU is very different from normal businesses. We lack some things that they take for granted. We have some things that they can only dream about. Many normal IT security practices are not currently legal at USU. USU has created an expectation of privacy. For years we have told people that their web browsing and email is private. We have legal obligations as a result of this expectation of privacy. Almost nobody at USU has legal consent to monitor others. Nobody at USU signs an agreement that explicitly authorizes monitoring. Neither students, faculty, nor staff sign away their right to privacy. This sounds crazy, but it makes good sense for a university. Creating, attracting, and retaining bright, inquiring minds is a primary USU goal. Satisfying the curiosity of security staff is a secondary goal. So, at USU, most day-to-day -day security monitoring takes place under the provider exception to the U.S. Wiretap Act. In the absence of consent, it looks like it is a felony to use our access and information to try to track individual behavior. However, we can check a computer or network's activity to ensure it is working properly. We can also use our resources to combat fraud and theft of service. We may also monitor misuse of a system in order to protect the system from damage, theft, or invasions of privacy. Our frame of mind can make the difference between doing our job or going to jail. Our guideline is we can investigate boxes, we cannot investigate people. We can ask, is this box acting like it was compromised? We cannot ask, what is Bob doing today? We can ask, is that box spamming? We cannot ask, what did Bob say in his email? In the course of investigating compromise, we might learn all kinds of things. However, we are very limited in what we can say. This is our default guideline when we lack consent. So, our first assumption is always that an aberrant box has been compromised. I have found that we can solve many common problems by handling the issue as if the computer was under outside influence. And it usually is. It is critical to the security of USU that we properly handle requests for exceptions to this guideline. We have failed our professional responsibilities if we end up arguing authority or legality. Before we get to that stage, we must make sure we have created clear, guiding policy and procedures. If there must be argument, it should be over whether to follow existing policy or procedure, or how to amend existing policy and procedure to cover the current situation. 
we must never say, I will not do that. Instead, say, that is not covered under existing policy and procedure. Never say, that is wrong, stupid, and evil. At least, never say it in writing. Instead, say, before we can do that, we have to alter the existing policies and procedures of USU. Let me help you understand the update process. This handles most of our issues, but about once a month we get a request that completely ignores all existing policy and procedure. Some of these requests are necessary, some may be illegal. This is not a reason to get excited, it's just part of the job. We have existing documented processes for handling these requests. If need be, we update our processes. For USU, the bottom line is always, what is in the best interest of USU? How can we illuminate the world? How can we create and sustain capable minds? How can USU survive? Security doesn't exist in spite of people. It doesn't exist in spite of us. We have to ask, what is this really worth to me? If we are intelligent and capable, this is not an easy question. Security professionals, professionals work at the intersection of interests. People, organizations, states, and countries all have competing interests. They are never in agreement. They all attempt to supersede each other. Each community generates requirements that are damaging to the others. Sometimes they generate requirements that are damaging to themselves. Every so often I have to stop and think. I have to regain my perspective. My great uncle lived as a hermit on the Green River until he was 95. He had a long, happy life. Then he came and lived with us for a year until civilization killed him. He lived about here. No Rapid 7 salesman. I could practice my cooking. No distracting phone calls. No spam. Possibly a little isolated. I would miss schlock and girl genius. But it looks like there's still plenty of room. What are my duties as a thinking individual? What are my duties as a father? As a grandfather? As an employee of USU? As a security professional? As a citizen of Utah? As a citizen of the United States? And as a citizen of the world? Every action I take is a compromise, but I must not compromise my honesty, my preparation, or my attention. There are always alternatives to any issue, but successful IT security means working with the world. You can't be a hermit.